Hello, Pachucolandia. This is JJ from El Pachuco Zoo Suits. I'm here today with Shamuel Gonzalez from uh, Boyle Heights History Tours. Did I say that right, Shamuel? Uh, Boyle Heights History Studios and Tours in East Los Angeles. And uh, we invited him on this week particularly because of, of, you know, what's going on right now in real life, uh, in, in all our cities, and also because this is a 77th anniversary of the Zoot Suit Riots. And uh, Shamuel has in-depth information. He does a tour um, that we all recommend that you go on, that I've gone on with the, with the Al Pacheco Zoot Suit staff and Phyllis and Ray. Um, but so Shamuel, welcome. Hey, thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm really honored to be here with you. All right. So tell us, you know, first of all, tell us a little about your background, where you come from, and how you got into doing these these tours, particularly on the Zutsu tours, but also you, I know you do other ones on historical places in East LA and Los Angeles. Yeah, so um, my name is Shmuel Gonzalez, and, um, you know, I'm a sixth generation, um, you know, person from the Los Angeles East Side, from, from East Los Angeles, you know, my family. Um, came to settle here in Boyle Heights, East Los Angeles in 1896 from Guanajuato, Guanajuato, Mexico. And, uh, you know, we've watched up, you know, we've watched all this be built up, you know, over the years and uh, have uh, six generations of just these nostalgic feelings. And, uh, you know, I'm very fortunate to, um, you know, because I was travieso, you know, usually in, a, in, in, in Chicano families, you know, you don't know about anything because they tell, you know, the, the adults are talking, go outside, go outside. But I was at the Ravieso that they had to watch and always had to have by their side. So I heard all the over the top stories um, that, you know, were being passed down to generations around the kitchen table. And, um, you know, as I got older, I really wanted to know whether a lot of what I had heard around the kitchen table, um, you know, with the older people in the family talking, whether these were cuentos exagerados, whether they were just big, tall tales. Um, or whether or whether they were true, and and um, it was amazing that you know I um, you know was really able to um, you know follow the guide of of my 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 parents, my grandparents, my great grandparents to follow in their footsteps and piece together the story of of East Los Angeles, and um, so that's what I do professionally now. Um, I do tours, and um, you know the tours they um, really they're really in order to fund this um, museum and cultural center that we have in um, Boyle Heights, East Los Angeles, a three and a half thousand square foot um, museum and cultural center where we just talk about the, um, the immigrant working class, um, you know, histories of East Los Angeles. And so, yeah. Right. Yeah, so, um, and, and before we get on, go ahead and give us your website, your Instagram, uh, call, uh, the, I forgot what the call letters are, and also your Facebook, uh, your Facebook, uh, uh, page. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, you actually find our most active pages on Facebook. That's where you know really everyone's at right now. And um, you'll find us under Boyle Heights History Studios and Tours. Um, I also have um a personal you know blog site, and uh, you know you can follow on what I'm personally doing, not just the Museum and Cultural Center. Um, under my handle on um, Barrio Boychik. And um, so B A R R I O B O Y C H I K, and uh, you know that handle goes back from you know me being a a uh, you know a uh, Chicano Jewish American here in the East Side, you know, and that's not very uncommon in East Los yeah. Angeles. And, uh, and so um, I, you also find me on Instagram under Barrio Boy Chick as well. Right. Uh, you can find out more about our tours under Boyle Heights uh, under bhhistorytours.com. Yeah, and so. Just to give you a background story on Shamuel, I mean, uh, you know, I started seeing you pop up on Instagram and page and uh, Facebook, and uh, I started, you know, being associated with the store. So I said, hey, who is this guy putting all this stuff about Pachucos and the Zutu Riot Tour? And, and I started investigating and saw, you know, seeing your page and everything is really in-depth and, and quality, quality stuff about, uh, you know, information about the Pachucos and the Zutu Riot. So, I appreciate the fact that, you know, at first I was kind of like, you know, who is this guy? And, but really, it's really important information. And we went on your tour and it's just, you know, it just puts you there. It actually, you put people in the scene of what was, what was uh, going on at that time. So 
let's let's talk a little bit about that about Pachucos and uh, what 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 can you tell how it started a little bit and then into the into the riots. I mean, what was the riots all about? Because you hear various stories. I just heard a new one about uh, that Pachucos were you know that they were created to uh, protect their neighborhoods from uh, Nazis and stuff like. You know, th you hear different things. So, what? Give us perspective on on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, really one of the, you know, the the the, the things that's very important for us to, um, you, you, you know, to keep in mind as we talk about, you know, the Pachuco history and everything, and because it's, um, you know, it's really so important, especially for Mexican Americans, for Chicanos, because. You know, this um, era of the 1940s is really a, um, you know, a coming of age of, of Mexican Americans in their, their, their own self-awareness um, within the backdrop of, of um, United States. Um, you know, the, um, the um, Great Depression has ended. Um, the um, wartime is bringing new jobs and new opportunities um, for Mexican Americans. And, um, you know, one of the things is, is that, um, you know, a lot of Mexican Americans are, you know, fulfilling all kinds of jobs during the wartime in order to help support the war effort. Um, however, it's interestingly that because of the national in, nationalism and xenophobia in America at the time, increasingly a lot of people in America are being um, treated as un-American because they look different, because they talk different, um, because they dress different. And, um, you know, one of the other things that we, you know, really need to think about this is, is that, um, you know, we're, we're going into an, an era in which um, there is um, Jim Crow discrimination. Um, you know, this is a time in which, um, you know, there are, uh, you know, there are white and black color, found, you, know, you know, water fountains and stuff like this in America, in which um, even in Los Angeles, um, you know, the city is segregated. And, um, you know, what's really rather important for us to notice that a lot of people think that, um, you know, zoot suiters, that, you know, the Pachucos were these ultra-ethnic hipsters that were revolting against American culture and society. And quite to the contrary, um, these, were, um, these were young people who really saw the first times of, of being able to get, you know, the good jobs, have a little bit of money in their pocket. And what did they want to do? They wanted to do like everyone else. They wanted to go to the movies. They wanted to go to the dance halls. They wanted to do it in style as well. And what they did is really quickly, they adopted really one of the most flamboyant styles from Hollywood, um, from the Paramount Pictures made famous by this hip cat named Cab Calloway, um, who uh, was just this amazing guy who came on this glorious zoot suit. Um, making famous a style um, that had been popularized by African-American youth and dance halls of swing clubs from Georgia to the famous Cotton Club in Harlem. And um, along the way, it migrated through um, immigrant working class communities in which people started to look at a style in which people of color had invented themselves, a style in music which they had invented themselves. And along the way, it attracted not, um, not just people of color, but white people who took on the style, took on the music. And I think that's what made it so threatening, is that um, in this era, it challenged the um, segregation by encouraging people to mix race dance with each other. <laughs> um, think about that in an era in which living side by side as black and white people is not allowed. Um, where dancing with each other is, is against the law, because God forbid you dance with each other, it might lead to dating and the horizontal mambo. Right. Um, you know, these types of things. And so what happens is that consequently, um, Mexican Americans empowered by um, the money from the wartime job, they are starting to buy into this style, they're starting to buy into the nightlife. And unlike previous generations of Mexican Americans, they weren't okay just to go into the, you know, the other communities of Los Angeles to fulfill their jobs. They wanted to be part of the nightlife like everyone else. They wanted to take a claim in this country like everyone else. And so young Mexican Americans decided to do, unlike previous generations, that they're gonna go to these movie theaters, they're gonna go to these clubs, they're gonna go to these cafes. And unfortunately, it came with a horrible, horrible um, you know, kind of pushback by white society who thought that these young Mexican Americans, uh, who were they, uh, you know, who, who the hell did they think they were? They think they're too big for their britches. Right. And uh, that's what the spark of, you know, really the Zutsu riots is, is, you know, trying to put 
um, you know, Mexican Americans who don't really understand up until that point that, um, you know, they are truly colored people. Um, in this society until they get there into the movie theaters into the clubs and they're designated to color only sections until they're dra dragged from those color only sections and beaten in the streets um, for daring to break um, you know a gentleman's agreement of the Mexicans you go back to your barrios and stay out of here um, it's 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 an amazing an amazing point in history of Mexican American self awareness wow yeah. And then, uh, and also, I want to, as we relate to the the Zusu uh, riot tour, uh, one of your stops is also at the at the Navy base that was walking distance, really, to parts of of LA, East LA, and, and Chavez Ravine of, of of all communities. Um, you're talking about the real values. Um, yeah, yeah. The, you know, that's that's what's really kind of hard is that you know in um. You know, in Los Angeles, Mexican Americans had never been a small number of people. Um, you know, even um, as Americans started coming in in large numbers, so did Mexican Americans. You know, um, you know, it, it, and it's especially so that in the 1930s and 1940s, Mexican Americans start to become aware of, of just how large of numbers they are. Right. You know, that they are no minority, you know, really within the city of theirs. And um, they're able to walk around the town with a certain level of, 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 of confidence. I'm um, in a city that had been founded by their ancestors. Um, you, you know what I mean? And so that comes as a huge um, surprise. Once during the wartime, you get these people who have been drafted to the war from all over the country in a segregated America that they're not used to being around people of color, let alone seeing Mexican Americans walk around this town like they own it. Right. Um, that, you, you know, that was just, they just could not handle that. That was just something that was, was just absolutely unacceptable. And, um, you know, it, 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 it really comes to a head at this point in history. And yeah, certainly. All right. And then, um, so what, what, you know, you, you have many opinions about what actually caused the riot. Um, you know, uh, Navy sailors treating, disrespecting uh, the Mexican women, the Mexican-American women. Um, what, what is your opinion on, on why the, the, the uh, riots actually started? Sure. And, um, you know, really one of the things is that, um, you, you know, really the, how the story starts of, of, of the Zutu riots, the, the unfolding of the, the riots, you know, really begins on, on May 30th of uh, 1943, in which um, you know, some young people are coming out of a movie theater near Chavez Ravine, um, you know, the Carmen Theater, and um, as well as some sailors. And you know, hanging around, there had been these groups of, of, of sailors and young Mexican Americans. And yeah, they did start to fight you know, um, over girls. I mean, what else are, are, are young men going to fight over, you know, really traditionally? Um, and show, you know, in this, you know, very chivalrous kind of way is set over females. And right. uh, yeah, that's the thing is, you know, having, you know, some of these, you know, soldiers who, I mean, they're sailors. And how do you think that say, I mean, you know, sailors act towards females. I mean, we kind of have characterizations about one in every port and stuff like this, but they, they don't like to, they don't like this. The right. idea that these, uh, you know, these gabachos are going to be making passes at their girls. And even worse, there are some of these sailors that begin to act to treat um, you know, um, um, you know, treat some of the, you know, young ladies like they're, like they're prostitutes and, and in very conservative, you know, Mexican American communities that, that, that is, that is a major offense. Right. Um, yeah, they're dressed up as all beautiful pachucos, but you know, pachucas, but not for you, <laughs> not for you. They kind of, they kind of, and so there begins these, you know, fights over, you know, over this, but ultimately what people kind of look at this is that there is one. Mexican American boy who's passing with a group past the soldiers, and you know, like a lot of um, ethnic people do, they kind of talk with their hands. Right. And he kind of makes a gregarious hand motion, and someone takes it for a punch. One white soul, you know, sailor jumps on one Mexican American, and then all the Mexican Americans outnumber the sailors, pile on. It becomes a rumble, and um, they lose. They get their asses kicked and have to, you know, crawl themselves back to their barracks. You know, at the armory. Um, but um, you know, four nights later, you know, um, they come back in order to hold, you know, all Mexican American youth responsible for 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 the 
the embarrassment of losing this rumble. And um, also to, 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 to make a statement that, 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 that um, you know, these, um, you know, these Mexican Americans, these pachucos, indeed these punks, they think that they're going to take over Los Angeles and we need to show them better. And um, that's what happens for 10 nights is, is um, you know, you have um, the raging of um, vigilantes, um, not just the sailors, but um, also the police. Um, that are involved with this, um, with the media that is fueling it along the way. Indeed, you know, we talk about that on the tour, how, you know, I show some of the articles, how the um, newspapers is telling people when and where the, the, the riots are going to be. Not where they had occurred the previous night, but where they are going to be that next night. Wow. And, and um, you know, that is what really, um, you know, is really traumatic. Although I, I do, you know, we do within the Zoot Suit Riot bus tour, we do take it back even further. And um, we talk about one event that, you know, um, kind of gets juxtaposed with um, the Zoot Suit Riots, even though it really doesn't have anything to do with the Zoot Suit Riots. And um, that is Sleepy Lagoon. Um, you know, that's, um, you know, during the Sleepy Lagoon murder case, um, in which um, you know, the, the, the police just need to hold someone accountable. So they're gonna hold a Mexican American accountable and, you know, for the death of this other young Mexican American. And um, it becomes this um, you know, mass criminalization of like 600 youth, a mass trial of, um, you know, of, of 20 some youth for, for the same crime and uh, jailed for it. You know? And it becomes you know, one, of these, you know, one of these instances in which it's apparent to people that this is just an administrative um, thing in order to shut a case and also um, for the newspapers to make a lot of money, that right. they're dramatizing this. They're making a lot of money through dramatizing this better than the novelas. You know what I mean? Everyone is picking up multiple copies of the newspaper each day to read what's going on you right. know, during the investigations and during the case. And so what happens is that Mexican-Americans are villainized during that time. And it's all in the newspaper as the police psychologist um, accused Mexican Americans is, of course, obviously it would be one of them that would do this murder because um, they have murder in their blood. They're descendants of Aztecs who, who you know, you know, used to rip out the hearts of, of of living people and you know eat their flesh and blah 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 blah. You know, they're barbarians, you know, in their DNA. And this is this is really just really one of these moments in which you see that on um, the newspapers they're able to make a lot of money off of this villainization of mexican americans and um when the zoot suit riots comes it looks as a, another opportunity for them to be able to sell stacks and stacks of papers and they go with it with glee not just not just you know here in in los angeles well i showed you some are there you know some of the you know the newspaper articles on you know, we had all over the country people having pictures of young people from the Orpheum as young as 14 years old, stripped naked, bleeding in piles with the police standing over them, right. um, you know, in the, in the Orpheum Theater, in, in the streets of Los Angeles. To have in the Washington News, you know, later on as young Mexican-American men are being, you know, thrown into jail en masse. Um, during the, the riots, um, they're accusing the, 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 the Chicanas of, of taking up the battle. And you have these articles where it talks about, you know, um, that, that um, Zoot Suiters run for covers, but their Cholitas, you know, carry on the violence. And, you know, it's, you know, it, it's, it's these, you know, it, it's just mind blowing, right. um, you know, that, that newspapers will show pictures of, of, of young people passing um, Olvera Street in front of La Gorondrina and they're holding um, you know, females' um, undergarments. How do you think those sailors got a hold of them? Right. The pictures of 14-year-olds being shot in the back of their legs in, from behind by, by, by officers as they're you know, going down Los Angeles Street from Olvera Street. Right. Um, you know, it's, it's, and this is just all kind of normalized in the newspapers. People are, are are gleefully, you know, taking in this 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 um, orgy of violence. Um, it, it, it really is a hard moment. And, and I say this because there was no newspapers. Um, there was no major newspapers that decried it. The only newspapers that decried it were a local newspaper here in the East LA, run by Al Waxman, um, the East Side Reporter, of course, run by a Jewish guy, you know, from the neighborhood who is who is appalled. He is seen in Eastern Europe that, oh no, this is a pogrom against Mexicans and writes it up as, as, as such. 
Right. And um, it, it's, it's, it's really one of these hard moments in America in which Mexican Americans um, are taught the hard way that um, we have bought into a certain level of white supremacy and that we had grown up and, being, and we're indeed teaching each other the ideas that if we just behave, if we just try to fit in, then we shouldn't have anything to worry about. We should be safe. Right. This moment in history teaches us that that's absolutely, that that's, that, that that's not true yeah. and that we're going to have to start um, thinking differently. We're going to have to start standing in our, um, you know, in our own strength. We're going to have to advocate for ourselves. We're going to have to stand in. And, and, and let me just also a couple of key things as we relate it, related to today, today's times, what we're, we're going through is a couple of things you mentioned. Number one, the media. Uh, Randolph Hearst was notorious for victimizing us, the Lat you know Latino Mexican Americans, as the problem. Um, and like you said, made a lot of money stirring that pot and uh, trying to uh, you know sway opinion on the Mexican American community that was really gaining their strength and being coming powerful. Um, and the other thing too that you mentioned is like during these riots, the cops just stood around and, and they didn't really protect. I mean, as far as what I see, and if you could, you know, expand on that, but yeah, I mean, it's, you know, 77 years ago and we seem to be going through the same thing only. Oh you know, yeah. So. Oh no, it, it's, it's, you know, it's really, you know, it's really hard because that is really one, what one of this on, um, you know, this moment in history, you know, really, um, you know, forces us to, you know, kind of on, um, you know, kind of look back and um, have to really honestly look at our experience and have to remember, wow, um, that's that time that, that, that we tried to pretend that we weren't people. <laughs> that we, you know what I mean? That, that we decided, you know, you know, it's kind of hard because you know what? For young Mexican Americans who were born in this country, this 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 era being taken under the wing by young African Americans who were teaching them, you know, the outside world right. and style and music and all of these things, um, you know, they they were they were being taught real easily within our own, you know, with, within our own context of living sorry, side side by side with each other, the idea of freedom. That, 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 that there was this other America that, was just, that wasn't just um, um, anemic white, you know what I mean? And um, that there was this other America that was being celebrated on the radio and in the pictures and in, in, in popular culture and in style and all of these things out there. Um, and, and really kind of lunch that did. And I think the hard thing is, is that um, young Mexican Americans um, joined their African American peers out there, and unfortunately, what they were not expecting was what um, the treatment was going to be. They had underestimated just how bad Black people were treated for trying to be part of that white society out there. Right. Um, and uh, they, they they totally underestimated it and found out firsthand um, as we found ourselves mass criminalized in the same way that they were. And, um, you know, these types of things. And so that's what's really important, you know, for us to, you know, kind of look at is that the coming, um, the coming aware of the coming of age of the Mexican-American experience is high with African-Americans in this. And, uh, you know, it's funny as I think back to, you know, some of the stories that people have told over the years, because, you know, African-Americans were deeply traumatized that um, you know, the police were even complicit to a lot of this. And, um, but there was nothing that the African Americans could really do as allies to protect Pachucos at this time. And so the be I, I heard some stories of some of the best things that people did was that for a lot of the 38th Street boys, what they would do was that the, the, um, the black store owners lent their cars um, to the Pachucos and told them, you know what, you go and you kick those guys' asses as back, you know, back up and blah, 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 blah. Take our car. Just leave it over here, back here on Central or Broadway with the keys inside. We'll pick it up later. But you just go, you know, sock it to them, you know, one good time. You know, get those racist bastards. Yeah. And, um, you know, of course, they could not have fought back in mass without them being, you know, right. um, becoming victims as well. But, you know, the interesting ways in which, um, you know, we um, you know, really need to realize that, um, you know, the mass criminalization of, you know, and we talk a lot about that in the Zutsu riots, how, 
you know, really before the 1940s, before this era, before these types of, um, you know, types of, of demonizations of young people of color and the mass criminalizations that come after this, um, you know, there are no real, um, um, there, there are no gangs as we know them before right. 1943. Um, there are, when we think of gangs, we think of little innocent groups of, of pachucos that are kind of like, you know, alfalfa and buckwheat, you know, type of gangs. You know, that's what we're thinking about gangs. Right. But unfortunately, the zoot suit becomes the symbol in which people are able to use it almost like a uniform and say, you know, those blacks and those Mexicans, they, they, they're baby gangsters. That's what this outfit says, is that they are baby gangsters. And so we need to treat them. We need to criminalize them the way we do the people who are members of Al Capone's gang and stuff like this. Right. Well, the truth is Mexican-Americans and blacks don't have, any, don't have any type of organized crime at this point in history. There isn't. There, 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 there is no, I mean, maybe disorganized crime, you know? <laughs> Um, you, you know, every some someone someone stole someone's bike or something, but there's no organized crime. What we see in 194 in 1942 and 1943 is a mass is is a, is a is a demonization of young people of color as a group, and then criminalization in mass. And then over the next two decades in jail, you're going to see that these young people are going to be forced into difficult situations up against real mafias, up against real criminals, and in jail they're going to learn nothing but how to become professional criminals for their own self-protection they're going to have to create their own gangs in order to model um right. you know those types of mafias with which they're competing with for space in jail and that's going to be ejected into the streets and i think that's what's kind of hard is that you know um you, you remember on the zoot suit riot bus tour we had some police officers that show up yeah. right as i was about to talk about that the, the, the criminalization of the media you know the demonization of young people the mass criminalization and the, the reality is is that um you know we need to go back because i think a lot of um the way i hear the veteranos who lived through that era they tell me they're like you know those bastards they called us you know gangsters like like you know like the guys with the machine guns and they criminalized right. us accordingly but we didn't say we were, but we didn't say we weren't either. And you know what? We did, but we didn't have the voice to say it. Now you need to go back and you need to tell them that, 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 that that's wrong. That right. That's wrong. So as you see, I hang around with a lot of the vatos. And when we talk about it, we talk about our social clubs because that's, that's, that is our heritage, social clubs. Stop calling us gang members. And we, and we have valid social clubs that are valid in low riders, valid in dancing, valid in the pachucada. We, 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 right. we have valid social clubs. Don't, don't call us gangsters. And, and um, now I, I think that uh, what I want to also mention too is, is what we talked before this interview is, is that you are going to do a, a, a uh, a uh, little video of today's an important day. I think you mentioned as far mm -hmm. as uh, with with LA City and what they did, and the legislation or the the ordinances that they passed uh, against being you know, wearing up a tube and such. So can you expand on that a little bit? Oh yeah, you know one of the things that um you know one of the things that happens is that in the backdrop of the Zoot Suit riot. Um, what we end up getting is the criminalization of the style. And so one of the things that, you know, is important, you know, to note within this is that eventually um, the, you know, the zoot suit does actually get banned um, within the city of Los Angeles. And so what's important to know, I, I, I thought I had it in here. Um, I'll, 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 I'll send you one of the, on the images so you can put it up on screen. There is, um, there was an all night city hall meeting um, that took place on um, between June 9th and June 10th in which the city hall had an all night city council meeting. And on um, this all night city council meeting was to in the, in the middle of the night, um, pass an ordinance in which um, they were banning the wearing of the zoot suit with repleats within the confines of the city of Los Angeles as a public nuisance, as you can tell, I've, 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 I've memorized it, you know, over the year. Um, because believe it or not, this ordinance is still on the books of city ordinances to this day, 77 years later. It is on the books. 
it is on the book because, because you know i since you know we started doing you know with, with with the actually with you and going on that tour and you mentioning that I, i've been looking for the actual ordinance in fact the council member i i, I know on ellie's council, well send it to me so we because i said what a great thing to have that repealed on an anniversary in fact I, i've been this is how long i've been talking to them the 75 75th year to have a resolution revoked and have anything that was meant about negative about people struck in front of the record, right? Yeah. Um, so, I, so if we can get that that text and so we can actually show it to a council person and have that removed and have a you know do something about it because yeah, I uh, I've been looking and I, I actually went on their website uh, their ordinances and searched the word Pachuco and I can't find it. So I don't know if it's maybe in a different so old, right? So maybe it's not even there, and they don't even have it on there. Yeah, that 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 is it. That was the that was the key to finding it is 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 that it said suit suit with reek pleats and 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 um and so you know and and that was just kind of amazing in like uh, you know in the throes of night you know real shadily you know they 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 yeah. they, they banned you know this uh you know the suit suit and and I say to this because you know my um. You know, my familiarity with um, El Pachuco Zutu Incorporated is through you know, as a young person, you know, um, as a preteen, as a teenager going to get suited for, um, you know, family, wed you know, our weddings, right. you know, and, and these types of events, you know, it is a heritage, which, you know, you hand down in a family. I mean, you're just born into it. You know what I mean? It, it is, you know, it is this thing. And, um, you know, it has become... You know, such, you know, one of these um, amazing styles, and and there's all these reasons to love it. I mean, Malcolm X, you know, um, Dr. King, you know, wore zoot suits. You right. know, as teenagers, you can see them, and so as teenagers, you know, we grow up with great pride, you know, within this. And so, um, it's just you know amazing to me that this is something that is so part of my family heritage, um, that it is it is. Um, um, still, the demonization of it is still left there on the book. I mean, I've always heard of weird ordinances as a historian about not letting, you know, um, drunk donkeys, you know, sleep in your bathtub and stuff like that, you know, yeah. left over from the old West days. But this is really one that, that, that you would have thought that in the rise of the Mexican-American civil rights movement, um, you know, really, you know, really would have been taken on. So that's what I'm going to do tonight is do a video. I'm going to I'm right across the street from the police department, so I get to be all chingon, walking around. <laughs> uh, you right. know, and, um, and yeah. So right now, uh, we're we're about gonna get into the time that we end our conversation, Shmuel. So let me just say a couple things on our on our end about well, as you see the background of our store uh, today, it doesn't look like that. We're actually our boarded up. Um, you know, we just didn't know what was gonna happen when this first started. I think 11 days ago, I think now. Um, so we took the precautions. Uh, we boarded up the window. They did have protests in front of uh, going through Harbor Boulevard in front of our store and uh, peaceful. Um, so, uh, but yeah, so our store, although it looks in the background, uh, we do have it boarded up. Hopefully we're going to take those down soon. Um, and as I said before in my other conversations, we're still uh, open online. Uh, Vanessa's working her heart out to, to fill the orders. And uh, now as we transition from COVID into, you know, this unknown of, of the marches and the protests, um, we totally uh, support, um, you know, the, the, the rights and, and the, the being able to protest. And we're with you. Al Pacheco Zutsuts is with you and with the community. And we look forward to, uh, to when we can, you know, have better days in, ahead of us. Um, so once again, from Phyllis and, and Ray, Ray Jr., Linda, and Vanessa, um, the Al Pachuco Zutsuts family. We just want to say uh, our prayers are out to everybody out there that's marching, that's uh, going out there and, and protesting and, and doing what you have to do ha to have your voices heard. So uh, with that, once again, just keep your, you know, if you could, we're small business, uh, Latina-owned, woman-owned, minority-owned. So we appreciate you supporting us during these times. We've been closed since uh, mid-March and um, you know we're, we're, we're struggling but we're getting by thank God for uh, deep roots in the community and many many uh, uh, people out there that are ordering from us right now so with that Shamuel, um 
So we're coming in close. So, um, and all I gotta say about Shamal, man, is, is if you heard this interview, just such uh, in-depth information about, you know, from the Pachuco, uh, the Zoot Suit Riots to uh, uh, Sleepy Lagoon, um, the whole history of that. We go to, in, in your tour, we went to Sleepy Lagoon, the actual uh -huh. site, which is kind of on the border of Bell, Commerce, I think. Exactly. So, so, um, so we, we really want to partner with you too um, as you go ahead and challenge LA City to remove that uh, derogatory stuff about oh, the, we join you and we'll partner with you and also to get those I know I know one of the things that you want to work on is really putting up a plaque at these these sites to, to really recognize them that they're part of our our our, our history yes so we Al Pacheco Zeus would love to partner if you never need help with any of that we're here with for you and we can use, you know, whatever uh, platform we have to help you out to, to reach those, those uh, you know, those, those uh, achievements. Well, th thank you for supporting me. You know, it's really great, you know, that, um, you know, when we met up, you know, in, in recent years and since we've been partnering, you know, when I walked in the store, I did not need to introduce myself to Phyllis. You guys had already known so much about me that, that, that we just meshed like family and I'm, I, I, so much support, your guys. Thank you for helping us keep the heritage alive, you know, yeah. for, for four decades now. So we appreciate and what, it. And whatever we can do, you know, when you have your tours, uh, when you get able to start up with the new requirements, whatever those will be for you. Exactly. 100% behind you. And we'll send, uh, when we, we ask our customers to support you in these tours. And I know when we went, we're able to, you know, get quite a few people to go with us, but, but such important history. Keep it up, Shamwa. We love you. Uh, much Thank respect you. and be safe out there. And uh, we look after, you know, everything opens up. We look to go back and, and be with you on your tour again. Absolutely. Well, I'm glad to have you. Be well. All right, brother. Thank you.